Chapter 1 Nathan Summers stared grimly at the photo of a young woman. Her body lay sprawled in the mud with her hands bound behind her. After a moment, his eyes moved on to the coroner's report. Chief, what is it, Norma? Her face was serious. We've got another one. He kicked his chair back and got to his feet. Where? Graves Landing, near the point. He hurried past her and out of the station. Scrambling into his truck, he took off down Main Street with his lights flashing. He made a right and drove parallel with the lake for about a mile before turning down a narrow road. His stomach began to churn as he neared the point at Graves Landing. There were several cars parked on either side, none of which he noticed were emergency response vehicles. Spotting his deputy's truck, he pulled off behind it and began the slow descent down the steep embankment. Morning, Chief. Jack, he said, ducking under the yellow tape. Who found her? A couple of hikers, he answered, leading him over to the body. They were walking along the trail when they spotted her. I've taken their statement already. Nathan took the pair of latex gloves he was holding out to him and solemnly knelt in front of the victim. Her long brown hair was matted in mud and leaves as she lay partially submerged in the silt. Dressed in navy shorts and a blood-stained tank top, her flawlessly tanned skin was in the process of turning a pale shade of gray. He saw the familiar marks on the left side of her chest just above the lining of her shirt. Her eyes were open and frozen in horror, revealing the absolute fear she had felt during the final moments of her life. Are you ready, Chief? asked Jack, kneeling on the other side of her. Nathan gave a short nod, noting that his deputy's complexion was nearly the same color as the girl's. Leaning over, Jack slowly pulled the silver duct tape from her mouth, exposing her lips, which were parted and blue. Nathan swallowed hard as he slipped his fingers inside her mouth. After a moment, they closed around a small, solid object. He slowly pulled it out and turned the stone over in his palm. The number four was smeared on it. Go ahead and bag it, he said, handing it to his deputy. Is she a local? Don't know, Jack answered, taking the stone from him. She didn't have any ID on her. As Nathan shifted his weight to his other foot, he caught sight of something shiny reflecting in the girl's hair. A closer look revealed it to be a gold necklace. The clasp was intact, but the delicate chain attached to it had been broken in half. Picking it up, he studied the charm that dangled from its end. It's the Star of David, Jack said quietly. Nathan handed it to him to bag and stood up. Is the coroner on his way? No, he's got two women in the final stages of labor. His office said he would be over here as soon as he could. Nathan stripped off his gloves and surveyed the scene. The body was partially hidden in some loose brush near the edge of the walking trail. This part of the path was more secluded and normally didn't see a lot of traffic. To the right of the trail was the lake, which ran parallel with it for two miles, all the way around the point, before ending at the cabins. The other side contained nothing but a steep slope that led up to the road. Jack pointed at the footprints along the ground. Those are from the hikers. Nathan looked at the impressions. Two sets of prints strayed off the trail and came close to the body. A burst of static sounded. Collins, do you read? Jack grabbed the radio mic on his epaulette. Go ahead. We've got a boating accident over at the north side of the old ramp. No injuries reported. I'll take it, Nathan said. 10-4, Norma. The chief is responding. As he turned to go, he noticed that a rather large crowd of onlookers had gathered at the top of the embankment. Nathan studied their faces one by one for a moment. Bag anything that looks suspicious. Collins nodded as he snapped a picture of the victim. I'll show her photo around see if anyone recognizes her. As Nathan began making his way up the slope, he was inundated with questions. What happened to her, Chief? Can't say, he replied curtly. I heard she's got the marks on her just like the others. Is that right? Are they fang marks? Who was she? The crowd continued to badger him as he climbed into the seat of his truck 
and reached to close the door. Mac Hodges suddenly appeared. What do you think, Chief? He said, holding on to the door. Is it just like the others? Nathan clenched his jaw. Mac's breath smelled of cigarettes and coffee, which together gave off an aroma of cow manure. Is that number four? Can't say. Nathan jerked the door shut and headed down the road to where the accident was.